So a few days ago, John Oliver released a monologue on HBO Max about trans kids. It was filled with tons of disinformation, factual inaccuracies, opinions disguised as fact, and some pretty terrible jokes. Um, I want to hop on here and give a rebuttal to his erroneous claims, since this garbage propaganda piece got a couple million views. To start, he attempts to equate homosexuality to transgenderism by playing an old CBS clip about a gay man. Our main story tonight concerns LGBTQ rights, something that we've actually gotten better at discussing, given that this is how CBS News covered the existence of gay people in 1967. The homosexuals <laughs> with CBS News... John, you cannot in good faith equate homosexuality with the removal of healthy body parts of children. I'll speak from experience and say that the penalty for being wrong about same-sex attraction is a lot less worse than being wrong about being transgender. He goes on to attempt to divide this issue politically by calling out conservatives. We're going to talk about transgender rights. Now, we actually first talked about this seven years ago, and the good news is that since then, more people do seem comfortable coming out as trans and gender non-conforming, which is great. But, as you have undoubtedly noticed, in the past few years, some on the right have truly lost their minds about trans rights. Perhaps Your attempt to frame this as a partisan issue comes off as divisive at best and deceptive at worst. Whether you like it or not, transitioning young kids is a bipartisan issue and you are on the wrong side of history. Conservatives didn't even know that this was an issue until feminists like J.K. Rowling started sounding the alarm. Next clip. Let's also remember that it's not actually the left talking about trans rights nonstop. It's Republicans who see an advantage in demagoguing this issue. And to ignore them doing that is to allow them to have real calamitous impact on people's lives. Did... Did you, did, did you read the script before you said this out loud? I wonder why the left doesn't want to talk about this. Is, is mutilating kids something to be proud of? If you expect the world to turn a blind eye while you quietly sterilize and experiment on children, you are sorely mistaken. I will not stay silent. Rufo suggested branding the discussion of trans issues under the umbrella of radical gender theory. And he tweeted out that conservatives should start using the phrase trans stripper in lieu of drag queen, it has a more lurid set of connotations and shifts the debate to sexualization. And sure, anything can have a more lurid and sexual set of connotations if you just rename it. I'll show you. Rain, sky jizz. Drag shows are sexual. I shouldn't have to say this. Kids should not have to watch anything found in nightclubs and bars. End of story. Let's move on. And to the extent that some young people are just exploring their gender identity, how exactly is that a bad thing? Who the fuck are they hurting? Themselves. They're hurting themselves, John. It's your job as a parent to allow kids to explore while keeping them safe. You can let your kid climb the first few rungs of the ladder, but don't let them go all the way to the top. Now, at the onset of puberty, an adolescent and their family might consider puberty blockers, hormones that delay puberty, and importantly, if that treatment is suspended, then puberty will resume, meaning that this is reversible. Think of it like a pause button. No. No, they are not reversible. The NHS has rolled back this claim. These are not reversible treatments. These are experimental drugs with many side effects. Try going through middle school while going through menopause. I want you to look a child in the face who now has osteoporosis and tell them just how reversible it is. Don't worry, guys. John doesn't leave out detransitioners. And you may have seen or heard from a small subset of people who detransitioned, but it is worth knowing such cases are rare and highly individualized. Studies show an average of just 2% of people who transition express regret, and that the vast majority of those who have opted to detransition did so not because of changes in their gender identity, but due to external factors such as stigma and lack of social support. And look, I could keep reading you stats and studies. I do, after all, love doing that. <laughs> or I could just let you watch this boy talk about what it felt like to have someone actually see him for who he was. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, read us some more studies. It would be great if you had any credible data, but you don't. Didn't you just write off detransitioners as anecdotal, and yet you expect us to take an anecdote of a trans kid seriously? What happens when that kid grows up and realizes how small the dating pool is? What happens when that kid realizes they lost their ability to achieve orgasm before they, before, they, before they even knew what that is? 
As for the 2% statistic, tell your doctor who just cut your genitals off that you now regret it. Tell him that you see his practice as abusive. This expectation is not trauma-informed. You cannot expect a doctor to report regret in his own malpractice. It's not going to happen. John, you are on the wrong side of history. You have the opportunity to come out in defense of children, but you took the most corporate-friendly route of being complicit in the state-sanctioned institutional abuse of confused children. Good luck justifying that once this all crumbles. Thank you.